Last year's a rocky labyrinth explored the heritage of Gibraltar city streets. Now this year, the partnership formed by local historian Manolo Galeano and photographer Victor Hermida have produced a follow-up book. Whilst the first one looked at the streets within the city walls, this one looks at streets, roads, trails and tunnels from the top of the rock down to the sea level. Beyond the ramparts has been a year in the making. It's been a lot more work than the first one. Um, I think that the town itself is fairly established. What we found is that that is not necessarily the case outside. Uh, a lot of the roads are, are new. The old ones have been changed, so we, we, we had to seek uh, advice and help from a, a lot of people. Every time we got advice on something, we had to check. Victor even went over to, um, to the British Library in Cure and was even checking up the old maps of, what was it, Victor, 1810, 18... No, before that. Before the 1789, yeah. I think. Yeah. You know, because the, the book not only covers the, the usual roads that people travel on, but it's also from the top of the rock to, to the sea level. It's up the rock and, and tunnels and truckways and roads that no longer exist or those with restricted access because they become private um, developments. And after a year of hard work involving research in archives outside of Gibraltar, it's to no surprise that new information has come to light. Well, for instance, we never knew that at the end you go down a Red Sands Road where um, Peter uh, Russo used to have his house there, Pyramid House. I think it's a, it's a centre for uh, Hindu religion or something. Nobody's sure about that. But there used to be um, a theatre there, the Empire Theatre. We never knew about it. I spoke to a good, good friend, Alice Mascareñas, who was supposed to be the expert on that, and she was aghast, you know, and said, look, we found this. The book is a hefty volume and uses a great number of visuals, over 700 images. A lot of them are maps. Um, we, we had to... I changed the, the format of the location maps. And um, with this one, what we've done is we've introduced a lot of the older maps to show how the road has actually developed in time. So it's, uh, I, I think it's been far more interesting than the first one, to be honest. Um, the upper rock was very challenging because the, um, the, the roads were primarily to get people to lookouts and then batteries and so on. But the names have changed. New roads have been done and, uh, you know, the, 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 roads of the, the names of the old roads uh, were given to the new ones and the old roads name changed. So it's, it's been quite a, quite a task trying to determine all these stages in time. It allows a reader to explore a street or trail at a time and, like the first book, can be used as a guide to the history of Gibraltar. It's also the history and information on what's around the, the, the different roads, the fortifications, the buildings that no longer exist. So to a certain extent, mm. it's like a, a mini description of history of Gibraltar as you go along. I know people who actually go with the previous book and walk around with it. It's going to be more, more difficult with something <laughs> more weight, really, because it's, it's quite a, a, a tome. Uh, but, you know, people are, are actually using the book as a way of finding out more about our Gibraltar and Tapatia Chica, which it is, you know. At the book launch, Manolo and Victor were each presented with thank you tokens by the Heritage Trust. The chair of the trust, Ian Balestrino, said that these were not replacing the Heritage Awards, but that the thank you tokens would be awarded throughout the year to those who go above and beyond in conserving or promoting Gibraltar's heritage. Beyond the Ramparts is now available to buy from all the usual sale points as well as the Heritage Trust's online shop.